one of the first books in, in Estonian language, wow. which talked about uh, financial literacy, uh, how to start investing, and uh, and what is the importance of, of investments. Investment world was was very interesting for me, the whole industry, and I decided to actually join uh, one of the one of the growing uh, real estate companies by just you know writing writing to the to the manager. Everybody. Today we have someone who is in their 20s and is investing for a very long time. Randy, thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure hosting you today and I can't wait to get more into your journey. We'll be talking about how did you start investing? How What are the options that are available to people living in Europe? Uh, your journey with your entrepreneurship, you know, different startups that you've created and a recently new created platform uh, for European uh, customers as well. And I'm super excited because I feel like so far we've not had anyone talk about options or platforms related to investing within Europe. So I'm really excited to hear more about you. So yeah, let's get right into your journey. Uh, tell us more about yourself. What do you do? And uh, you know, just a bit on your background as well. Like, how did you start investing? Where did this all start for you? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, for the invitation. I, I think what what you're doing is is very important for for the people because you know I've been around uh, financial literacy for for God knows how long. You know, mm -hmm. um, I used to be actually a professional footballer. Um, you know, which means I got paid uh, what I loved. So yeah. And, uh, um, and um, you know, all the time when you needed to travel, there was a lot of, you know, time, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the travels could be, I don't know, three hours long, uh, three hours there and three hours back. So you needed to do something. That was the first indicator, you know, I, I need something for my for my life. But mm -hmm. but actually, my, my journey really started with uh, with one of the questions that my dad used to ask, uh, ask from me. Uh, this question was, what did you do today to become better than you were yesterday? Wow. And you know, as as a, as a young boy, I think I was like around sixteen uh, at that time. You know, you always answered something along the lines that you know, I I cleaned my room or I studied mm -hmm. or I yeah. did this, I did that. But but I actually never understood what was the what was the the reason for for this question or what was the mission that he tried to achieve with me. And um, and I actually, I remember the exact day when I when I said to my dad, "Hey." I didn't do anything today and uh, he brought me uh, he said perfect and he brought me a book called mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty much I think the one of the first books in in Estonian language wow. which talked about uh, financial literacy uh, how to start investing and uh, and what is the importance of of investments and I was around yeah I was around 16 uh, at that time and I remember very clearly that, that I was never uh you know a student or, or a person that you know loved to read books uh, mm -hmm. for me everything was you know uh, very boring or you, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you had to do a lot of a, a lot a lot of stuff that wasn't really our interest but with that book you know um uh, i think I, I i read the whole book pretty much in one day because wow. this was something very exciting this was something that you know you had thought about but you never actually read about it or you never got the information so you know after the book after i read the book i i immediately decided you know i want to be a part of uh, investments you know i want to become an investor um when you're 16 at least that's how in, in europe it is uh or in estonia you have to be 18 to uh, actually um, open your own investment account or bank account so uh we we went and we opened my first investment account and i bought 400 euros worth of of stocks wow. this money was saved up uh from birthdays mm -hmm. uh, um, and you know doing uh you know maybe small jobs and stuff yeah. and but yeah, also yeah. you know starting to get my first salary as well and uh and yeah do you remember much... sorry Randy, do you remember which stocks did you invest in like the first stocks that you invested in yes they were tiling stocks tiling uh, is the is the company that operates the, the between estonia and finland mm -hmm. and, and sweden the the, the greece uh, greece ship they also have hotels they they, they have uh yeah. Uh, they have e-stores. They have yeah. They're pretty broad in in their mm -hmm. business. But but yeah. Uh, and the the reason why I also invested in these stocks was uh, I remember uh you know looking the stocks list that were listed on the on the on the Baltic stock exchange and uh, and seeing uh, some of the uh some of the names that were very clear to me. You know mm -hmm. what they do. And that is also one of the one of the lessons that I learned from a very early age. Um, that you can only invest into stocks 
or investments uh, overall that you understand yeah uh, there's no point to you know invest in something to you you don't understand and um, it ended up being actually a good investment uh, mm-hmm. i remember getting my first profit from there as well i mean which wasn't like something big right. but i think i got lucky in, in 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 the process because you know i just i just uh, bought it because i i knew it pretty much nice no i think that's a really good advice honestly like right off the bat to invest in things that you do understand and uh, i was actually reading a couple of articles about your journey so far so you have been someone who is recognized as 30 under 30 in estonia which is a really big deal uh, you've started investing like you mentioned very early on in stocks and then you've also dabbled around in real estate so maybe we can get into that part as well like how did you start off in the real estate moving from stocks how did you educate yourself about real estate uh considering your father has been an inspiration for you and he's also been the one who's been teaching you you know on the go and i feel like having that sort of uh figure in your life plays a really important part right uh so how yep. has that journey been for you and how has that shaped up your investment so when, far when when i did my first investment uh my dad really uh, i i I, tr- i i understood the more things that my dad tra- that tried to to mm-hmm. to teach me one yep. of the things was that i got 30 euros uh, a month that is about you know 35 dollars a month pretty much yep. that, that was my whole cash pretty much i i got and wow. that that led me to you know really trying to understand how i spend my 30 euros a month mm-hmm. maybe one euro i can invest but this this was a good thing for me uh, back that time because every you, you needed to understand every expense you did and so on and that also led you know in, in my further life understanding that if you can plan 30 euros a month you can plan i don't know 1000 euros a month or yeah. 10000 a month and that was one of the key parts also in the financial management if you you know now I'm entrepreneur um, I I I operate my my companies and 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 I understand the finances but the very first steps were actually were actually my personal steps mm-hmm. but but yeah um I I I quit uh I quit football I was you know it's not a cliche but I was 99% happy I went for this 1% and I ended up in Estonian business school where I actually yep. met you first time as well yes and, uh, <laughs> that is true yeah and uh, I was actually I was actually at that time I was part of Estonian investment club where mm-hmm. I got the scholarship for one of the best young investors or, or something similar to that and I got a free scholarship for one year events so after every i can't remember now exactly was it every two weeks or three weeks you had those big events you know where tens or hundreds of investors come together and i was literally the most dumbest person in the room and i was not like afraid of it because i said to myself it's fine to be the most dumbest person in the room yep. and but i also think this one year taught me more than you know previously those two or three years so it and it it, it became very clear for me that and also at EBS at one point mm-hmm. i would like to you know start a start this kind of uh, club yeah. uh, i'm sure i remember if it, that i remember, I remember that. that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, and you know at that time already when i was in the university the investment world was was very interesting for me the whole industry and i decided to actually join in one of the one of the growing real estate companies by just you know writing writing to the to the manager wow. hey i really like what you do uh i do not have like uh, a proper uh experience in the mm-hmm. real estate but please let me know if i can do something for you and um and the application was successful uh, mm-hmm. i got to work uh, in the in not only the on the on the construction side like uh, you know planning uh, the whole like development process and mm-hmm. you know from from analyzing uh, the new properties to you know really like selling them but also uh managing uh, a rental portfolio which was also very very interesting for me because you know that was my first time when i was really experiencing what it means to have like 10 plus 20 plus uh, apartments where you need to have the rental uh, you know the the rental management you need to manage uh, pretty much everything that comes mm-hmm. with the real estate uh, there and uh, yeah i i i got a i think you know nine months or or like 12 months uh, around the year i was i was in in the real estate and uh, and i decided at one point you know real estate is is a pretty pretty damn expensive uh, investment yeah. but it's yeah. it's one of the most understood investment because this is something physical and mm-hmm. this holds a value and at one point i was i was doing a research in estonia how can how can i with you know a smaller budget than uh, than you know a proper real estate investor yep. enter the real estate market and i i found out that in the eastern part of uh, estonia which is maybe a less 
you know, it gets less focus. It it gets like less like developments and so on. Mm -hmm. And the prices are are much much lower. And um, and I ended up buying actually one of the apartments that I now uh, flipped uh, wow. uh, successfully uh, at some you know some some months ago. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, you know, when talking about real estate, it's there are a lot of different aspects about it, and uh, the thing is uh, that if you if you're willing to you know uh, put more effort into it, if you're not just a passive investor, a passive investor in real estate is someone that you know just buys, holds it for I don't know maybe twenty years, yeah. and then sells it and and you know tries to uh, grow the uh, grow the portfolio in that way. But in my case, you know what I mentioned, flipping was you know buying something making it better and then selling it off uh, the department cost uh, the apartment price was 800 euros actually so what? 800 euros for 50 square meter uh, apartment in eastern uh, eastern estonia uh, it was on the last floor uh, the building was okay uh, although this this is like a russian part of estonia where mm -hmm. you kind of have to understand russian as well but but again hundreds of percents in return because i saw the opportunity and and i took it so for me, you know, in the real estate, in that Wait, age, did I hear it correct? You said 800 euros? Yeah, 800 euros was the was the apartment. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. So this is, this is something that, you know, if you want to become an investor in real estate, uh, you can. There are the, actually opportunities. There are auctions. There are, uh, there are like, you know, uh, on apartments or properties that are, you know, uh, very in a very bad shape that you can do, you mm -hmm. know, something. But... But, uh, you know, it also it also brings you some kind of, uh, let's say, a stress, because uh, usually if, if the price is so low, there, there has to be something wrong. So yeah, yeah. As, as, as much you are willing to uh, invest your time, your energy, your, uh, you know, learning also, because I, I did not know how to, you know, uh, change, uh, change some of the, you know, I don't know, from piping to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, floors and, and so on <laughs> yeah. but yeah right now uh me and my partners we 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 have a investment uh investment firm a small boutique where we also invest uh, not in Tallinn but we we found out that you know when you look at the trends uh there are for instance in Estonia for instance let's take let's take Baida which is uh mm -hmm. exactly in between two of the biggest cities and now they are making the the highway uh right better right now from thailand to buy it's around 45 minutes to 50 minutes and uh, and looking what's happening in thailand mm -hmm. a lot of people are moving here the prices yeah. are growing people still need to live somewhere so we found actually a very good op opportunities in buy and where we now have uh, have bought some of the some apartments there as well it's not 800 euros anymore now we're talking yeah, tens sure. of thousands but uh, yeah. but my point here is uh, is the fact that if you want to have an opportunity you need to search for it and in my case i found it and i'm i'm pretty sure that's you know that's possible pretty much on every market it just people don't feel it very sexy investment but mm -hmm. in terms of return uh, in in percentage this was actually a very very good investment so this you know sums up my my real estate uh, experience but you had a question also or you mentioned before the you know 30 on the 30 and and, and yes. getting to my entrepreneurship mm -hmm. journey you know i've been i've been always uh, quite active i i would say I, I i took you know everything from my school life i mm -hmm. uh, I was the head of the student council. I, I tried to do as, as as many things as possible. I tried to network as much as possible. Uh, you know, and uh, after I graduated, I, I actually had the first time in my life that I had no plans whatsoever wow. because of what 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 COVID did. First yeah, I mean, I think our batch like literally we graduated <laughs> in the middle of COVID. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Twenty twenty uh, was was the was the year that I graduated, and and yeah. COVID pretty much demolished all my yeah. plans. So I had no plans at all. Uh, so, and, you know, two months went by. One of my, my friend and I, we, we started actually uh, a company in the property technologies uh, industry, which was related to um, a tenant screening. So I, like I mentioned before, I was uh, I was related to, you know, tenant management and yep. and seeing how difficult could be the process of, of getting a good tenant was uh, you know we, we saw that there there can be improvements and uh, and uh, yeah for the first six months we just built the product we we tried to you know complete MVP but you know f the things didn't work out pretty much yeah. we didn't get the funding and it was very very tough and uh, and you know some some time went by I still wanted to you know be a part of the entrepreneurial journey 
uh, I started networking again. I started meeting people again. And, um, you know, we started actually a company called Landex back in 2021, early 2021. Uh, Landex is the first European land investment marketplace. Uh, this uh, this operates on a crowdfunding model, which is something that, you know, we can later on talk about the differences between yes. the US and the European markets or, or any other markets. Uh, this works in a crowdfunding model, which means that we have made an access for investors to invest into land, both forest land and farmland, with as low as 10 euros. If you have 10 euros, you go to a Landex site, you see uh, there are different uh, listings. You can invest 10, minimum 10 euros to that mm -hmm. land, uh, pretty much a landowner in this project. This was, this was my first, uh, I would say, you know, you, you can't say success, but, I, you know, the product is, is up. We have over 600,000 euros worth uh, funded uh, land. We have over 3,500 3 investors in the market. So this was, this was something that, you know, of course, there were difficulties because people understood that the land, you know, is everywhere, but they never understood. I think they still don't understand the land prices uh, on mm -hmm. average, for instance, in Estonia has grown around 15 to 16 percent and so you can you can be very very passive bad investment still and uh, great returns for you mm -hmm. uh, but one yeah, thing i'd uh, like to add here randy is that um so i am someone who's not really used landex but i do get those emails quite often and i think what to me what's interesting is that while let's say sitting in finland or sitting in estonia uh, you can invest in properties in other european countries as well and I think that flexibility is something that I've never seen before. And these might be the options that people are looking for. For example, sitting in Estonia, you want to invest in Riga, you want, you want to invest in Romania or any other, you know, like up and coming uh, sites or lands. And I think this is a really good opportunity for anybody who's interested. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a part of, you know, living in, mm -hmm. in Europe. It's very, although, you know, Estonia is a so small country. We have 1.3 million people living. It's the only, the, you know, the, 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 pretty much the same size as Netherlands. Yeah. But the, the nations are very, very united. A lot of things we don't do only in our country. You know, when when growing up in Estonia, you you get a lot of news what's happening in Estonia, mm -hmm. but in yeah. Europe cities, and that also brings uh, this flexibility to the service. Mm -hmm. Now with Landex, we're uh, we are seeking up to you know fund lands in Estonia, but in Latvia and Lithuania, yes. uh, like you mentioned, this this brings that mm -hmm. you can uh, in many countries mitigate the. Mm -hmm. I think one question that the listeners might have is that how does the crowdfunding investment part, like the process actually look like? Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say if I want to invest sitting in Estonia and I put in the 10 euros, that is the minimum uh, mm -hmm. in a land, let's say in some parts of Estonia, right? Not even going out. So how does that work in terms of selling, in terms of getting the profit out of the resale? Like how does that part look like? So if we if we take the crowdfunding overall, what does it mean? It's uh, uh, there are usually, you know, uh, many parts these many people many investors that uh, invest into one project yep. uh, and the, the goal is to get it funded so whether it's equity funding whether it's loan funding whether it's something else in in terms of landex how it works is we screen uh, we screen lands so we have uh, advisors on the board that you know have been in the in the in the forest and land management industry for 20 30 plus years and they they can uh, they can really you know uh, give from their experience and based on the, also on the indicators what is a good land what has the potential so uh, we screen the lands and we see you know potential there we you know put everything on the all the terms all the description for people to see and yeah we, we put it on the marketplace you as an investor you need to make an account there uh you need to verify yourself because of the regulations um mm -hmm. that is also one of the reasons why in the in the states you can't uh, have the crowdfunding as such yep. uh, but in, in europe it's possible but it's possible in a way if you're only very you know uh the all the aml which means anti-money laundering and all the regulations are 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 correct so uh, if you do the account you can then go and see the listings let's say you found um, you found some kind of forest land yep now you click on the forest land you see the terms if you like it then you can you know choose the amount you can uh, you can invest into it and usually uh, in terms of landex we do have per listing on average we do have around uh, you know 70 to 80 investors in in that project and um and uh, let's say you invested into this forest land, whether there is a target hold, how long we're going to hold this land, 
uh, on the on the marketplace or if we get which is also a very very common thing that we see now on the marketplace is the way we also choose those lands are are also re related to the neighbors and and, um, and and other investors in the area so we see like let's say there's a big fund mm -hmm. that likes to buy those lands up and uh, at one point we just get you know uh, you know we, we we get some kind of uh, an offer for that land and then we you know announce the investors say you bought this land for 20,000 euros, mm -hmm. uh, in, you know, some fund is offering 30,000 euros, would you like to sell it? And, you know, if the majority says yes, then we will sell it off. But but the crowdfunding in our case is also, we do have a secondary market, which, you know, you, you can list your positions there, you can sell with the profit or with the loss, it's up to you, you know, uh, uh, a lot of crowdfunding sites actually do not have a secondary market. Mm -hmm. So this can be a risky, uh, you, you know, if you're, let's say, a loan investor and you invest in some kind of a loan, there's a terms, uh, you earn some kind of interest. But what if, you know, something goes bad and you can't anymore, you know, sell it off or nobody's really helping you. So when looking into crowdfunding, you have to be sure that the credibility is there. You have to be sure that, you know, they have shown some kind of a track record before. And you can also see, in case something goes bad, how does the company, you know, protect you or, you know, mm -hmm. so are there any, any kind of, you know, regulations that need to uh, need to be on your side as well? So, so, you know, this pretty much sums up the, the whole crowdfunding. Uh, awesome. industry. Nice. So if anybody wants to check out, it's sort of like investing in fractional stocks, but in fractional lands through crowdfunding, they should definitely check out Landex. Uh, now coming to my very next question, Randy, which is why we're hosting this episode as well. Um, you've you, So you told us about investing in stocks. You told us about investing in real estate. Mm -hmm. I really want to come to the idea of how and what are the options exactly to invest while someone is living in Europe? Uh, like what sort of funds do we have access to? What sort of asset classes can we invest in? What sort of platforms should we use? Um, like how does that differ from the American standardized way of investing? Uh, so for example, the reason why I even started this project is because for example, if you go on Google right now, if you search investing in 20s or how to start investing, the first thing that pops up is how to invest in S&P 500, right? And those funds aren't accessible even if you're living in Europe, let alone in the rest part of the world. Uh, so how do we, like, what are the options available while living in Europe? And since you talked about real estate as well, in US, I'm assuming there's also these REIT funds, real estate funds that people can invest in. Are those options also available in Europe or not really? Uh, sure. Um, although, you know, uh, you know, the US stock market uh, is, is the biggest stock market in, in the world by, by the volume. Yep. And um, and a lot of uh, Europeans still follow, you know, the U.S. Uh, stock market because U.S. stock market also gives us the indication. So, for instance, how I have noticed how in Estonia or how in Baltics mm -hmm. the things work is if there was some kind of a news uh, in the in the U.S. Uh, the day before, yep. I can be pretty sure that the next day, you know, the European markets are affected by this. So there's a very strong bond between the US market yep. and the European stock market. But of course, we, we do have um, very active uh, stock markets in, in, in Europe. There's a lot of companies that have done, you know, the cross listing. They are both listed in, in some kind of, uh, you know, in, in, let's say, New York Stock Exchange, but they're also uh in um in let's say in, in german uh, stock exchange yep. so there are companies that are you know in on, in in both uh, in both you know exchanges but but overall i would say that the, the big, biggest difference maybe comes in also in the in the way that you know uh, that the behavior or the or the the way that people look at things so in in europe i would say that the, the may uh, or the majority of the of the investors uh, have actually uh, have actually invested into uh, US market uh, and and the US investors are not investing in the Euro European market but the thing is that we we have a very very you know when you when you think of the Europe there's each nation and they have you know their own pension system they have mm -hmm. you know very very different ways how the pension systems work and a lot of uh, a lot of those pensions uh, funds they they still operate, you know, or still invest into the U.S. stock market. So, a lot of European, uh, European, you know, investment behavior is related to the to that to that market. But I was uh, previously talking about, for instance, crowdfunding, which is due to the regulations, which is uh, very very regulated. Never, never, you know, uh, recommend anyone starting a crowdfunding business. But very regulated market, yeah. not 
not possible in in the in the US. So mm -hmm. we we cannot even accept any any US investors in the US. You have to be accredited. So which means you can be only pretty much an institutional investor to invest in in such projects. In Europe, this is possible, and uh, you can you know if you're living in Europe, uh, you know investing into crowdfunding is 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 possible. You know when we now talk about let's say you know the ticket sizes or investment sizes. Mm -hmm. In in a, in in Europe, what's you know very interesting uh, when talking to to very very many investors from very you know beginner level to high level, what's very interesting is that the, the average ticket sizes are so so small. In for instance, in Estonia or in Baltics, there you know the, the, there's been a tremendous growth in terms of uh, investors. I think alone in 2020. The number of securities account grew almost two hundred percent. So more and more people are uh, are still getting there, mm -hmm. and that means the whole environment, uh, European investment environment, is still in the development, is still right. growing, and there's a lot of like options, options, uh, you know, in the in in the future as well, or in the near future, like mm -hmm. more and more, you know. Uh, companies are are opening and making you know investment so easy and uh, and the ticket sizes yeah coming back to the ticket sizes is in Estonia for instance we recommend young people uh, uh, start investing as early as possible yep. but you you can you know invest in Estonia without any any fees this has been around I think five six years I've seen the same trend happening now in very many different uh, European countries where. Mm -hmm. You can invest uh, fee uh, without fees, which means young investors who don't have uh, you know hundreds or thousands of euros uh, or dollars or whatever currencies, they can still become an investor. And it, and the Pretty thing good. is that you know when when buying uh, you know one stock of something or one fraction of a stock, the thing is that you don't need to. Or you don't expect to become a millionaire of this one stock. Mm -hmm. What this does to you is is this behavior of habits. And like I mentioned before, if you can handle thirty euros, yep. you can handle ten thousand euros, or one hundred thousand euros, or one million. Mm -hmm. The thing is that in in Europe, what I've noticed is we have much more this you know behavioral and um, and. Uh, behavioral change and this you know habits and people are talking now more about this and and this, that is a good thing to see because i've been around financial literacy industry for a, for a quite long time now but this mentality is now changing that's really uh, good yeah but really yeah. i think it's you know it really associates itself with the rise of the platforms as well like in the past few years the amount of platforms that have come into the space mm -hmm. Uh, regarding fintech, fintech inclusion, regarding trading, investments. I think it's also because the market is finally ready. You know, like these mm -hmm. things are taught to, you know, kids in Europe at a much early, like earlier age. Uh, but I think the access and the resources now that are available in the region is immense, uh, which allows, you know, to you, know, you to like jump in easily uh, to have more sort of control on your finances to, and also mm -hmm. to educate yourself in a much better way than you did before. Mm -hmm. So in exactly. terms of education part as well, um, since we're, you know, like the C's is all about educating people regarding the options that they have uh, and how can they invest? Like maybe if you can like give a rundown of the options that say living in Estonia, what options do you have to invest your money? Or living in Europe in general, what options do you have to invest your money? Of course, the risk factor associated with each differs uh, and to each their own because it does depend on your personal uh, journeys and what your personal capacity is but yeah in generic what have you to say uh, yeah um, first of all I, I, I'm, I'm very proud of uh, seeing that you know right now in Estonia what's happening is for mm -hmm. the past two or three years that the government has stepped into the game but before it was more like a private you know uh, institutions or, or private people even myself you know I've been uh, I've been giving the financial uh, literacy seminars mm -hmm. and workshops for past five years now but but seeing the government supporting financial literacy uh, amongst the young people, you know, mm -hmm. putting those putting those uh, you know lessons uh, to high school students to yep. even even before high school, uh, that is a good thing to see. But but when uh, when thinking of uh, how and and why and where you know young investors or beginner investors or or people who are making their first step. Where they, where they, uh, or what's what's maybe most interesting, or when we when we look at the behaviors and when we look at the statistics, where people end up investing, the first of all, it's it's stocks, 
and mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's the local market stocks. I always say to beginner investors or, or people who are making their first step in the industries, you know, uh, buying a stock is like buying a car. You mm-hmm. need to understand, you know, what are your needs? Do you need a, a sports car or do you need a, you know, a convertible? Is it going to be a manual or automatic? Is it going to be red or black, you know, uh, the fuel side and so on. So there are a lot of different questions that, uh, you know, you need to answer yourself before making the first step. But but yeah, now looking back to the, you know, statistics that they first they invest into the local markets. But what has also happened amongst the, you know, the young beginner investors is the crypto, uh, yes. which we're seeing yeah. uh, also in the mm-hmm. in the you know in the in the landscape investment landscape happening now, and this is now super unregulated stuff. Mm-hmm. And this is something that I I have uh, I have encountered a lot uh, recent years. You know, when giving my seminars about you know overall financial literacy, why to start investing, how to start investing you know, opening your first, you know, investment account and making your first investment into something. I have, uh, I have encountered young people that I have lost pretty much 99% of portfolio, which was also the same case for me. You mm-hmm. know, back in 2018, I lost 99% of my portfolio. You know, I invested 4,000 euros. I think now it's 30 euros is left or something. Most mm-hmm. of the uh, you know, companies have have gone into bankruptcy but this is a yeah this is a very dangerous trend that we're seeing because this not only loses money for that kid but it what it what it also means that a lot of those people have lost their interest in in yeah. in, mm-hmm. in investing like so, the confidence you know in themselves and the industry it's lost exactly the- Ex- exactly so now our job is to you know um, make them feel like you know good uh, uh, make them feel interested again in, in the investment uh, world so there are steps that you need to follow before making your first step and that is now again a good thing uh, when you look at the, the mentality and the overall uh, like you mentioned that the, you know the the overall European investment landscape is now becoming more mature and it's more mm-hmm. ready there are more and more companies op- uh, you know uh, making their first step the market offering you know without any fees uh, offering, uh, you know, secure investing, uh, secure by by secure, I mean, you know, investing itself, it's it's very risky. Mm-hmm. Even if 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 it's like I don't know, S S and P five hundred, there's still some kind of a risk. But but secure, I mean, you know, uh, it helps you to you know not cross any limits. Uh, it helps you to you know you know understand what you are buying. You have all those disclaimers uh, and uh, and making the investing you know, more understandable for those people that are making their first step in the in the industry. Awesome. So, uh, so uh, and, you know, talking about also in the, you know, in, in the European investment landscape, one of the very interesting uh, thing is uh, that there are uh, real estate uh, investment trusts uh, or funds. You know, it is it is so much more common in the in the states than it's you know in in Europe. Although we we do have there are like some of the big funds. Uh, you know, in, in in Germany we also have one of the funds in in Estonia as well, which is actually very interesting because um, real estate at itself uh, is very uh, understandable asset class and it's very very popular. I would say it's the most popular asset class in in Estonia as well. But we do not have, uh, you know, such uh, funds operating. For instance, you know, when when talking about Landex as well, I was thinking at one 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 day that there's not even a land fund. For instance, you know, yeah. one land fund, land five hundred, let's say mm, five hundred, yeah. uh, yes. very very good position lands. Uh, so, mm-hmm. Randy, you should create that. I swear, I'm gonna invest. <laughs> that sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> because land itself it's also a part of like real estate you know True. you can yes. you can uh, uh you can choose let's say uh, uh you know potentially you know developers uh area or you know mm-hmm. areas which have more trends but but rates in uh rates overall in europe uh are they are they are popular uh but you know a lot of european investors look at the u.s market uh, because most of the rates you know operate there mm-hmm. and uh, and and all overall like when we talk about some funds and indexes still most of the europeans they make their choices uh pretty much based on the volume and based on the risks as well you know you can you can invest into you know some kind of you know baltics or let's say nordics fund 
but uh, you know it's it's more less risky or mm -hmm. let's say there's more let's say some kind of uh, you know transparency or or performance uh, behind the US funds so a lot of investors in Europe still uh, invest into US stock market because this is popular there's more volume there is uh, let's say the you know it can be less uh, liquid mm -hmm. as well Exactly. And, uh, and and yeah. Okay, now that you really, you know, went into detail, and which is really, really good uh, about options to invest in Europe. So you mentioned there are stocks, there is crypto, there are funds, there is real estate, land, of course. And all of these have different ways of investing, whether it's crowdfunding, whether it's fractional stocks, fractional lands. And I think everybody needs to explore on their own what fits their budgets best, what fits their risk capacity best. Uh, but moving towards the idea of how to start investing, and I think this is linked to the question that I had uh, for the session for you, which was in terms of making a decision, right? There is a step that you need to go through after you've set your budget, after you defined your risk capacity that, okay, how do I do an analysis on this fund that I'm looking at? or on the mm -hmm. stock that I'm looking at, or on this company that I'm looking at? Like, how do I make a decision based on what I see or what's happening in their, let's say, portfolio, what's happening in their growth, quarter on quarter, annual earnings, or whatever it is, all the news that I'm receiving in the media right now? How do I make mm -hmm. a decision based on that in terms of, you know, like, okay, this is the one that I pick uh, for my investment? This is the most, uh, this is the most, I would say, important question. And this is also the most question that I get asked mm -hmm. is how do I choose uh, where and how to invest in like you know I, I don't know you know you're, you're just a person you come to me you, you ask you mm -hmm. ask this question so how I how I usually approach these uh, these questions or how I usually approach these people is you know let's let's start with you what, what are those things that you can understand this is the most mm -hmm. important thing yep. ever like you can't invest into something that you don't understand so for instance we, you, you know, we were talking about the crowdfunding before. We have, have you know, let's say art. You, you know, you can buy art. Yes. You don't need to even uh, buy through crowdfunding. You can buy art. I don't know anything about art, but I know that they have very good uh, returns. And uh, and now if you, let's say you are very, you know, you know very, very well some kind of a market. I think the first thing is to step into that market and see what's happening there. You know, I've, I've been around sports and, and football for pretty much my whole life. I, I know there are companies, uh, not companies, but clubs mm -hmm. that are also listed on the stock market. Wow. And, uh, and that was actually one of my, again, my, one of my first things when I, when, I, uh, when I became an investor was that I saw, okay, there are sports clubs. What does that mean? Uh, mm -hmm. because I didn't know, you know, a lot about, you know, financials. Uh, I didn't know how to analyze them, but I understood that, you know, I, I won't be investing into some biotechnology company because I just can't understand them. Yeah. So this is the first starting point. Uh, the second starting point for you is you need to decide what are your goals. So are your goals, you know, long-term? Mm -hmm. Are they short-term? Uh, do you want to earn money? Do you want to, you know, retire, uh, plan for your retirement? So they're like super long term. I'm just trying to understand your personal goals with this uh, investment. Do you have some kind of a thesis? Do you have some kind of ideas? Uh, I need to hear everything. So for you out there, I think it's maybe it's easiest if you talk to someone or if, if you write it down. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your goals? Uh, and now moving on from your goals, it's your budget and it's your risk. So, uh, and you can have like, you know, you can have different portfolios or you can have some kind of a different allocation. How I usually have uh, have said to, you know, beginner investors is that you can always, uh, you can always like do, like redo your portfolio. I have like, you know, redone my portfolio. I have, uh, uh, you know, sold pretty much everything uh, yeah. three times, and, uh, and and you know, started again because you know this 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 thesis or this you know thing that I followed wasn't right uh, for for mm -hmm. my fit. So understanding how much is your budget, I I really really like you know always say that please do it like consistently try to do as consistent try to be as consistent as possible try to let's say put 100 euros a month 100 dollars a month yeah. on the side and uh, and based on your risks you know you can choose uh, also you can you know filter a lot of different uh, options when when coming to investing 
And and the fourth thing is if you have done, you know, all this job, you know, trying to analyze yourself first before making the step to the market is to is to surround yourself with an environment. I, I think this is very, very interesting uh, a concept uh, that mm-hmm. I, I have personally developed for a very long time in myself uh, for, you know, almost 10 years now yeah. or 10 plus years is that your environment is 20 times stronger than you will. So this was the th- the time when I, you know, got the uh, scholarship to the Estonian Investment Club, mm-hmm. uh, I didn't understand anything pretty much. But I learned when people to- uh, told me about, you know, about, let's say, options trading, when mm-hmm. they talk about funding, when they talk about real estate. This whole thing about getting better will help you along the line uh, when you start your investment journey. Uh, so, you know, educational part is super, super important. First thing that I did, I, uh, of course, I bought, you know, stocks, 400 euros worth of it. Uh, but, the, but you know, I should have actually bought more books and, you know, a lot more, uh, uh, more maybe people that were experts in this field. So this can even be the first step before doing anything, invest in yourself first, and then, you know, follow the other steps but mm-hmm. if if those four steps are are met, uh, then uh, you should probably see what are the best options uh, for your investments. So if if it's a you know a stocks you want to buy some fractional stocks, is it going to be a platform? I don't know. For instance, eToro, or you you know, is it going to be through bank? In Estonia, we have LHV Bank that offers I think quite good uh, mm-hmm. quite good pricing for for buying stocks. Uh, uh, so if you understand your needs, then we can also put you know other terms uh, uh, to that place and uh, and the sixth step which is the most important step which a lot of people actually do not reach because of some fears because of some uh, steps that they didn't do before is to start actually making your first investment will help you you know understand everything better pretty much so you have to start in order to uh, become an investor so even making mistakes is is fine you know you can always invest your money that you're willing to lose as well but that was mm-hmm. also the thing that i said be consistent be consistent you know put 100 euros a month aside or whatever the whatever the number is put maybe you know you know buy one stock a month you can make mistakes but in, in finance we do have like an unwritten rule that you know uh, learning from other people's mistakes is much cheaper so uh, you, you might want to learn from others mistakes mistakes and, yep. and try them so True. so those are the you know maybe the six things uh, that i would point out if you if you want to become an investor and what are the steps you should follow before doing so and i think one thing that i really want to highlight here which is a really important part of the show right now uh, randy you're currently building a platform that is making investment analysis super super easy for beginners for somebody who's in the game already somebody who's starting off doesn't know where to look doesn't know how to start uh, and it's different from the rest because we do see a lot of platforms that are apps or or web or whatever you know where you can invest but the knowledge aspect is missing and that's this is where you know platforms like investing at 25 this is where you know mm-hmm. Finbay, like these this is where these platforms come in so i really want to you know uh shed more light on that and uh, tell us more about what is it that you're building and uh, when can we have you know a hold of it because right now there is early access that people can uh, you know get their hands on i will mm-hmm. share a link please uh do check it out and subscribe uh, so yeah, Randy, over to you. Yeah, uh, 2022 uh, was uh, in April. I stepped down as a CEO from Landex and, um, you know, I, I I started thinking, you know, I, I took some time off because I, I felt I was like almost burning out and, and the team needed a different kind of energy. So I took some time off and uh, there was one thing that kept me up at night was, uh, you know, I've been for past four or five years, I've been working with uh, beginner investors, retail investors, mm-hmm. uh, young investors, and, and I've been I've been seeing one of the trends is that the same question that you asked me beforehand, uh, that how do I choose uh, yeah. where to invest or, or, you know, what what makes one investment better than the other one? That was something that kept me up at night that people cannot analyze actually the investments and, and they don't need to understand all the financials uh, uh, because this, this, you know, 
investing needs to be accessible for you know more and more people it's it's not only you know those professional traders that are yeah. you know working on wall street but they're everyday normal people and uh, and me and my two partners we are all from the financial industry we have worked together before we're all we're all founders and we mm-hmm. started putting down ke- sketches and we we came up with finbay uh, so finbay is a is a platform for retail investors uh, that helps to analyze publicly traded stocks and create more uh, market awareness and on top of that of course uh, our one of one of our missions is to raise the level of financial literacy so what does that mean is finbay has automated uh, stock analysis for mm-hmm. retail investors so you can come you can see over 50000 uh, publicly traded stocks you can come you can you know put the name of it let's say tesla uh, and then we provide all the necessary information for you and as you mentioned uh, uh, pre- previously uh, correctly that there are uh, you know services on the on the market that you know offer uh, a stock analysis uh, also automated stock analysis the thing is what they're missing is in my opinion is the educational part yep. you know really trying you know, give the the knowledge for the retail investor, for the beginner retail investors, uh, for them to really understand, you know, what does, you know, for instance, debt to equity ratio for, for 90, 95% of investors, this doesn't say anything. But mm-hmm. what if we give them an indicator? So let's say below one debt to equity ratio is good. Over one, it's bad. And what does mm-hmm. this actually mean? And so on. Plus, on top of that, you know, all the seminars, all the, you know, calculators, uh, you know, uh, writing, you know, blog on the on the mm-hmm. on the topics that are currently happening in the world. For instance, we got a lot of coverage. Uh, we got a lot of attention for uh, for the topic that we just wrote about Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank, because, you know, people were interested yeah. in what is actually really happening, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, Finbay has research finbay has uh finbay has a dictionary so what we're trying to do is we're trying to give retail investor a 360 degree experience so they don't need to you know have any other platform uh, they, they come they see what is a good investment they can analyze mm-hmm. their their preferences and uh, and actually learn also more and get better and therefore make better investment decisions because currently the average annual return for retail investor is about 2.6%. So this is a very, very low when we think of the normal yep. inflation rate is around 2 to 3%. So we, we're trying to change that. We're trying people make better investment decisions, earn more, and ha- actually have a happier life eventually. Yep. Awesome. Nice. I will definitely be sharing that link as well. And uh, I am so happy as well to announce. And this is where the drum rolls begin, Randy. Uh, (laughs) Okay, so we will be actually having a partnership uh, with FinBay and Investing at 25 because I feel like we are completely aligned on the idea of financial education, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. What FinBay does is not what we do and what we do is not FinBay does. So we're trying to fill in the gap for each other. We're going to be educating people on, you know, the financial and how to invest in finance. And then they can, you know, come on board, join FinBay and start learning how to actually analyze those decisions that they make and then move forward with other platforms to actually start putting their money in the stocks that they want to invest in. So I do understand that it's a three-step process, which was never done before, but uh, I think it's going to be more and more beneficial for any other retail investor who's starting off, who is still currently thinking and trying to navigate the market. Uh, do I step in now? Do I step in later? Do I step in an autumn when the market you know, starts to settle down a bit? Uh, so I think all these questions that people have, so I would definitely, it's worth checking out. Um, and I'm really happy, honestly, to, uh, you know, come on board as partners as well. So thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy as well, uh, because, you know, uh, what you're doing is you're very, you know, you're offering very much value for those investors out there, for, for people that are maybe, you know, they haven't done their first step in, mm-hmm. in, in, the, in the financial markets or in the financial industry. This is a good thing because for me, you know, I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm quite a nerd in the financial literacy. I, I, I really try to make an impact in the, yeah. in the financial literacy, not only in Estonia but also in the, in the, in the region. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy that uh, you know, Binbei with, uh, with your, uh, with your viewers and and your people uh, now have a part of, uh, you know, uh, joining. Uh, 
first of all our our waiting list which yes. uh, you know we were expecting mm -hmm. to launch the the initial uh you know project in in the coming months uh let's hope in like eight weeks or so where wow. we will let you know when Amazing. and we're also glad that there were tens if not hundreds of investors that were actually a part of you know building the product uh, you know they've been part of you know designing it and and it is really made it's it's really made uh, to fit all the you know uh, beginner investors and and then trying to mm -hmm. make the investment decision so very happy about the partnership Amazing. and i think this is a this is a good thing to you know have have for this day Absolutely. But thank you so much for this session today, Randy. I think we're going to you know, end this on a really high note uh, so people can look forward to more content from both of us uh, in mm -hmm. the near future. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for this. And uh, I'm really glad that I finally got a chance to learn more about you know, the European stock market, even though I am a part of it, been investing, but I feel like this aspect has been missing for a very, very long time. So thank you again for coming in, filling the gap. And uh, of course, there's much, much more to learn for all of us. So yeah. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Awesome. Have a good one.